Hello students, today we will discuss on introduction to immune system. First of all, let us have a brief introduction on immune system. Historically, immunity is defined as resistance to disease, specifically infectious disease. But it has become apparent that the mechanisms that confer protection against diseases also operate when a body mounts a reaction against some innocuous substances. Such a reaction is triggered when certain foreign substances invade the body from outside. The mechanisms of immunity that protects against diseases caused by the foreign agents can themselves injure the body and cause disease at the same time. Therefore, immunity has been redefined as a reaction against foreign substances including but not limited to infectious microorganisms. This reaction may or may not be protective. The collection of cells, tissues and molecules that mediate resistance to infections is called the immune system. And the coordinated reaction of these cells and molecules to infectious microbes comprises an immune response. Immunology is the study of the immune system including its responses to microbial pathogens and damaged tissues and its role in disease. Now, let us have a brief historical overview. Immunology as a discipline came out of the observation that individuals who had recovered from certain infectious diseases were thereafter able to protect from the disease. The Latin term immunis, meaning exam, is the source of the English word immunity which means a state of protection from infectious disease. Perhaps the earliest written reference to the phenomenon of immunity can be traced back to Thucydides, the great historian of the Peloponnesian War. In describing a plague in Athens, he wrote in 430 BC that only those who had recovered from the plague could resist the disease because they would not contract the disease a second time. Although early societies recognized the phenomenon of immunity almost 2,000 years passed before the concept was successfully converted into medically effective practice. Now, the importance of immune system. The most important physiologic function of the immune system is to prevent or eradicate infections. The importance of the immune system for health is dramatically illustrated by the frequent observation that individuals with defective immune responses are susceptible to serious, often life-threatening infections. Conversely, stimulating immune responses against microbes through vaccination is the most effective method for protecting individuals against infection. The immune system does more than provide protection against infections. It prevents the growth of some tumors and some cancers can be treated by stimulating immune responses against tumor cells. Immune responses also participate in clearance of dead cells and in initiating tissue repair. In contrast to these beneficial roles, abnormal immune responses cause many inflammatory diseases with serious morbidity and mortality. The immune response is the major barrier to the success of organ transplantation which is often used to treat organ failure. The products of immune cells can also be of great practical use. For example, antibodies, which are proteins made by certain cells of the immune system, are used in clinical laboratory testing and in research as highly specific reagents for detecting a wide variety of molecules in the circulation and in cells and tissues. Antibodies designed to block or eliminate Potentially harmful molecules and cells are used widely for the treatment of immunologic diseases, cancers, and other types of disorders. Now, the innate and adaptive immunity. Immunity is a part of a complex system of defense reactions of the body. These defense reactions can be innate or acquired. Innate or natural immunity refers to the work of mechanisms that pre-exist the invasion of foreign substances. This include 
physical barriers like the skin and mucosal surfaces. Chemical substances, mostly proteins, that neutralize microorganisms and other foreign particles, and specialized cells that engulf and digest foreign particles. The mechanisms of innate immunity are non-specific, that is, they do not discriminate between different kinds of foreign substances. Also, the innate immunity is non-adaptive, that is, the nature or the quality of the reaction to a foreign substance does not change when the organism encounters this substance repeatedly. Innate immunity constitutes the first line of defense and is provided by epithelial barriers of the skin and mucosal tissues and by cells and natural antibiotics present in epithelia, all of which function to block the entry of microbes. If microbes do breed epithelia and enter the tissues or circulation, they are attacked by phagocytes, specialized lymphocytes called innate lymphoid cells, which include natural killer cells and several plasma proteins, including the proteins of the complement system. All these mechanisms of innate immunity specifically recognize and react against microbes. In addition to providing early defense against infections, innate immune responses enhance adaptive immune responses against the infectious agents. Now, acquired or adaptive immunity refers to a reaction that is caused by the invasion of a certain foreign substance. The elements of this reaction pre-exist the invasion of the foreign substance, but the reaction itself is generated strictly in response to a certain foreign agent, which is called an antigen, and changes its magnitude as well as quality with its successive encounter of the same antigen. The acquired immunity is highly specific. That is, the system discriminates between various antigens responding with a unique reaction to every particular antigen. The acquired or specific immunity is highly adapted. That is, the nature or quality of the reaction to an antigen changes after the encounter with this antigen and especially when the organism encounters the same antigen repeatedly. The ability of the immune system to remember an encounter with an antigen and to develop a qualitatively better response to it is called the immune memory. This feature is a paramount property of specific immunity. Adaptive immune responses are especially important for defense against infectious microbes that are pathogenic for humans, that is, capable of causing disease and may have evolved to resist innate immunity, whereas the mechanisms of innate immunity recognize structures shared by classes of microbes. The cells of adaptive immunity, that is lymphocytes, express receptors that specifically recognize a much wider variety of molecules produced by microbes as well as non-infectious substances. Any substance that is specifically recognized by lymphocytes or antibodies is called an antigen. Adaptive immune responses often use the cells and molecules of the innate immune system to eliminate microbes and adaptive immunity functions to greatly enhance these antimicrobial mechanisms of innate immunity. For example, antibodies, that is, a component of adaptive immunity bind to microbes and these coated microbes avidly bind to and activate phagocytes, that is, a component of innate immunity, which ingest and destroy the microbes. In this manner, the innate and adaptive immunity operate in a cooperative and interdependent ways. The activation of innate immune responses produces signals that stimulate and direct subsequent adaptive immune responses. And the innate immunity is phylogenetically older than the more specialized and powerful adaptive immune response. Humoral and cell-mediated immunity. Immunity can be active or passive. Active immunity refers to the immune reaction that develops in an organism after the introduction of an antigen 
or immunization. An organism that is not immunized but receives blood cells or serum from an actively immunized individual acquires passive immunity. From observations on animals acquiring passive immunity with a transfer of either serums or cells, immunologists learn that immunity could be humoral or cellular. The former is conferred by substances dissolved in serum and other body fluids. Today, we know that these soluble substances are antibodies and that they are produced by B lymphocytes. Cells, more precisely lymphocytes and accessory cells with the necessary participation of T lymphocytes confer cellular immunity. T lymphocytes play a major role in the recognition of antigens and their elimination, but they do not produce antibodies. Humoral immunity is mediated by proteins called antibodies, which are produced by cells called B lymphocytes. Secreted antibodies enter the circulation and mucosal fluids, and they neutralize and eliminate microbes and microbial toxins that are present outside host cells, in the blood or in the extracellular fluid derived from plasma, and in the lumens of mucosal organs such as the gastrointestinal tract and respiratory tracts. One of the most important functions of antibody is to stop microbes that are present at mucosal surfaces and in the blood from gaining access to and colonizing host cells and connective tissues. In this way, antibodies prevent infections from ever being established. Antibodies cannot gain access to microbes that live and divide inside infected cells. Defense against such intracellular microbes is called cell-mediated immunity because it is mediated by cells which are called T lymphocytes. Some T lymphocytes activate phagocytes to destroy microbes that have been ingested by the phagocytes into intracellular vesicles. Other T lymphocytes kill any type of host cell that are harboring infectious microbes in the cytoplasm. In both cases, the T cells recognize microbial antigens that are displayed on host cell surfaces, which indicates there is a microbe inside the cell. The specificities of B and T lymphocytes differ in important respects. Most T cells recognize only protein antigens, whereas B cells and antibodies are able to recognize many different types of molecules, including proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and lipids. Now, the characteristic features of immune response. First one is specificity. Its response is uniquely specific to a particular antigen. In fact, antigen receptors of lymphocytes are able to recognize parts of complex antigenic molecules. The part of an antigen that an antigen receptor uniquely recognizes is called antigenic determinant or epitope. Second one, diversity. All immune responses involve lymphocytes whose antigen specificity is already determined. The array of antigenic specificities of lymphocytes that exist at any given moment of time is tremendous. This is approximately 1 billion or more. It has been proven that this enormous diversity of specificities exists independently of exposure to antigens and is being created by molecular mechanisms intrinsic to T and B lymphocytes. The total number of antigenic specificities created by this mechanism is called the lymphocyte repertoire. The third one is memory. Immunological memory is the ability to remember a previous encounter with the antigen and to develop a faster, stronger and qualitatively better response to the antigen when it is encountered again. Such responses are called secondary or recall immune responses. These responses are faster, stronger and qualitatively better than the primary response due to the fact that memory cells mediate them. The next one is specialization. Immune responses 
to different antigens may involve different molecular and cellular mechanisms for the sake of maximizing the efficiency of these responses. For example, antiviral responses are most efficient when T lymphocytes are involved. Responses to extracellular bacteria work best when B cells produce antibodies of certain classes. Responses to parasite must involve B cells, T cells, and non-lymphoid cells called eosinophils. Next one is self-limitation. Normally, all immune responses wane with time after antigen stimulation. One reason for that is the successful elimination of the antigen that caused the response. The other reason is the existence of negative feedback mechanisms. And the last one is the ability to discriminate between self and non-self. The immune system is said to tolerate self antigens. The latter are substances that are produced by the organism that is the host of the immune system. The same substances can behave as foreign antigens when exposed to an immune system of a genetically different individual. Because of tolerance of the cell, the host normally is not harmed by its own immune system. Finally, the conclusion. Immunity is the state of protection against foreign organisms or substances. Vertebrates have two types of immunity, innate and adaptive. Innate immunity is not specific to any one of the pathogens, while adaptive immunity displays a high degree of specificity. Typically, innate immune response are much more rapid than the adaptive and therefore constitute the first line of defense. Immune system plays an important role in helping the body getting rid of harmful foreign agents and prevent the body from infectious diseases. Thank you students.